Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Sanchez missing today, uh, as you've noticed. But what I thought I'd do today is make some videos relating to the upcoming rotations. So, San Sanchez, what do you want? What's this? Well, Sanchez come back and I think this is what we're doing our video on today. As you may have guessed, this video is about the top things to remember on your first day as a doctor. It's quite a stressful time, isn't it, Sanchu? Yeah, definitely. And there's a couple of things that I did and a couple of things that I wish I did on my first day mm -hmm. that I think we'll tell you guys about. Yeah. The first thing that I did, which I'd recommend, is a shadowing week. So this is essentially something where a week before you go and you follow the F1 job you're going to take mm -hmm. and they show you the ropes, show you what the consultant likes, mm -hmm. introduce to yourself to the nursing staff, get to know how the ward works. So it means on your first day, you can hit the ground running. Yeah. Uh, luckily, where I was, we were paid for this. Okay. I know some places, especially a couple of years ago, weren't paying people for this, which obviously puts people off. Mm. But I think it did make a massive difference. I never got offered one of these shadowing weeks from where I started as an F1. So if this isn't something offered in your deanery, don't worry. Simple things you can do is just go on the hospital website, orientate yourself to the way the hospital's laid out, maybe find the ward that you're gonna be working on, the canteen, where the car park is, just to make that first day a little bit easier. So you, you know where you're going, kind of, you're not just completely lost. A lot of you obviously will do this, but make sure you introduce yourself to members of the team. The important things, where the crash trolleys are. Fingers crossed you don't have to go to a cardiac arrest on your ward on your first day. Yeah, hopefully. But it does happen. Make sure you know where you can put your stuff, where you're working from, which computers you can use and which ones not to use. Yeah. On your first day, you're going to be anxious. Anything that you can do to reduce anxiety, mm -hmm. it's gonna be good, definitely. So the second thing which I wish I'd done, which uh, I didn't, is remember, being an F1 is all about being organized. As an F1, you don't need to know how to manage the most serious conditions or be able to perform open laparop laparop. You don't need to be able to manage the, the strangest conditions yet you can think of. You don't need to, be able to go to theater and take over from a consultant. All you need to be able to do is organize your patients, know what jobs need doing, and get them done in a timely fashion. Start the night before by packing your bag. So in your bag, a couple of pens, stethoscope, so everyone knows you're a doctor. Hmm. Otherwise, what's the point of five or six years exactly, of school? Yeah. Third, water bottle, lunch, if you're organized enough to make it, and make sure that bag is there ready in the morning so you can literally pick it up and just leave the house. Yeah. If the, the, the single thing you bring to a, your first day, if it's just a pen, you're off to a good start. There's nothing more useless than an F1 who doesn't have a pen. Mate, yeah, I didn't have a pen my first day. Oh, for it. I actually didn't. The wall clock was really nice, she gave me a lot of pens. Um, but yeah, make sure you bring a pen to your first day. A pen, essential. Medical degree, optional. A lot of people had these F1 boxes. Oh yeah. So it's essentially, imagine an A4 clipboard, mm. but it opens up and you can put things inside like yeah. pens or pieces of paper or whatever. Mm. I personally didn't have one. Yeah, I never used one either, but. But a lot of people seem to have them. Yeah. So if you're inclined towards that way, then go and buy one. Yeah. But the key point is your main job as an F1 is to be organized. Yeah. The next thing to remember is you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Your first day can be quite lonely because you as an F1 often start and your consultant might not be there. Mm -hmm. The regs and SHOs might come later in the day because they're at induction. Yeah. And on my first day, I don't know if you've seen our other video where I talk about my first day. I was by myself. Mm -hmm. There was no consultant. There was no reg. There was no SHO. It was just me as an F1 and I had to do the ward run by myself, which I've not done before. Mm. And yeah, it's a little bit daunting, but I still knew that, look, there's an on-call medical registrar. Yeah. There's an on-call medical SHO. There's an on-call consultant. There's plenty of people I can call if something kicked off. Yeah. Fortunately, I didn't need to, but always remember there's somebody who has a lot more experience than you who you can ask. Yeah. And the other thing that goes with that point is you often think, this question I'm going to ask somebody senior mm. is slightly stupid. But just remember, it's your first day and people are very understanding of it. Yeah. The first couple of weeks, and I'd argue even months after August, as an F1, people have no expectation of people you. People are really lenient on what they expect you, should expect you to know. So if you're asking stupid questions, no one will mind. Mm. They'd rather you ask stupid questions than do something dangerous. However, if you make the same stupid mistake twice, yeah. or ask the same stupid questions over and over again, mm. yeah, people are gonna get annoyed. Yeah, if you, st if you ask a question, and someone takes time out of their day to explain to you how to do something or a uh, way to go for something and you don't really pay attention, you do it and then a couple of days later you ask the same question again that's when they'll start getting annoyed yeah. but there's no real stupid questions as long as you're not making the same mistakes over and over again I'd agree with that In my entirety of F1, I don't think anyone ever had a go at me mm. asking stupid questions yeah. and I was asking some 
sort of stupid questions yeah. in retrospect. Yeah. So remember, you're not alone. Another really key thing you can do, particularly on your first day, but maybe every day, is get there early. If you're starting at nine, don't aim to get there for nine. Get there for maybe half eight. Then at least you've got some time just in case you can't find parking, if there's a road closure or if there's a traffic jam. The worst thing you can do is be late on your first day because it's just going to make you more anxious and it's going to give the wrong message to your team as well. On my first day, I arrived to, the, to my hospital 45 minutes early and then realised I was at the wrong hospital. But because I was there so early, I had time to get to the, to the right hospital and was there for 15 minutes before I needed to be. Top tip, go to the right hospital. Yeah, definitely. So in my trust has two different hospitals. So I assumed the induction would be the hospital I was going to be working at. It wasn't. I thought I was bad, but I look okay compared to that now. On my first day, I was running late. I ended up being there just on time. But in my rush, I reversed out my parking space and I reversed into somebody's car, which when you're anxious about your first day, yeah, it's not the best way to start off. Then having to get out in the rain, find your insurance details, leave it with somebody and then think how much is that going to cost? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely worse than my story. Because at the end, I still arrived early. But you went to the wrong hospital. <laughs> I was still early on the, the right one. I wasn't late, I was on time. But I was planning to be early. And the final, maybe the most important thing, is just enjoy it. You've been preparing for this for five or six years. So just take a breather, enjoy your first day, have a good time. And that's the only really way you're gonna get through your F1 year. Yeah, I think often on social media especially, you can, it can feel like it's just doom and gloom. Yeah. Doctors are often very negative about medicine. And don't get me wrong, there are downsides. Yeah. But as with many things, if you go in with a negative attitude, you'll have negative experiences. Yeah. Asancha is a psychiatrist. Yeah, definitely. And if you are quite negative about it, it kind of rubs off on your team as well. They'll know that you're, you're not quite enjoying it or things aren't quite right. If there are things that you're not enjoying or if there are problems, then let someone know, probably your consultant. But just try and go with a positive attitude because that's, that's the best way of making the most out of it, really. You meet so many new people. Yeah. There are so many social events going on. You're going out for dinner, going on nights out and stuff like that. So it's kind of been like uni again. In uh, a way. Except you have money. Yeah. yeah. So enjoy it. Well, not for the first month because you haven't like, paid anything. Right, guys. So that's our five things to remember on your first day. If you have any questions about any of that or mm -hmm. if some of you who are already doctors want to add some things, comment in the box down below. Yep. Otherwise, see you guys next time.